to make his voice on the lookout. The system decides who's most deserving. The council can't give me what I need. Oh, I'll both mental health. And who's left on the street? Mob you and council party. Piss take. <laughs> densely populated city, Portsmouth, there's a shrinking number of council homes. We've know. lost about 50% of the housing stock we had over the last 30 years. Demand far outstrips supply. And the bottom line is we simply don't have enough housing to meet all of that demand. Government plans to extend the right to buy scheme are expected to reduce social housing stock even further. Among the few properties soon to become available, this one-bedroom second-floor flat for £116 a week and a two-bedroom apartment in a large council block for £95 a week. <laughs> These people all claim to be facing homelessness. This isn't my fault. I haven't asked to be made homeless. This is really, really difficult. But who will be lucky enough to be given the keys? the city's growing homeless problem falls to housing officers like Jackie. All right then, thanks, bye. With homeless people, we have to prioritise those that are the most vulnerable. There's a limited supply of social housing, so it is one offer only. If the person doesn't accept the offer of accommodation, the likelihood is, is the council won't rehouse them. Unemployed mum of four, Emma, has come to the council as she'll be homeless in just six days' time. My landlord has decided to sell the house that I live in and I need to be housed. I need an upstairs and a downstairs, preferably with the garden, because I've got children and a dog. For the last 14 years, Emma has been renting this three-storey townhouse for just £150 per week, all covered by housing benefit. She says she can't find another affordable home in the private sector. That was a ride, that's the old boy. I don't have property around this area. My younger son has global learning delay. It's important that he stays in school because he's getting help that he needs. She says her own health issues also affect the type of property she can accept. I have a huge anxiety about heights. Mentally, physically, I couldn't cope with it. It would make me ill. And the dogs come with me wherever I go. They can't just tell you to get rid of an animal. <coughs> if it was somewhere unsuitable, but somewhere that I didn't want to be, I would literally hit the roof. I would go fucking mental. When you're done that, can you do that in Africa? Just go mental. Someone's not giving me a house. Yeah, I'll have a tantrum. You can't do that either. But you just have to realise that there's mercy and grace. If she is all you can do. She's allocated. Mercy and grace. I can't guarantee your property where you can take your dog to because I can't sell him. I'm sorry, I've had him for 13 years. You have to that's like, that's like saying, there. well, you've got to get rid of one of your kids. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I can't do mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Across the I knew your dog was going to be an issue because you've had him for such a long time. He needs to stay with me. Even if I've got super rooms, he needs to stay with me. Okay. You're looking at that floor. That is the reality. What's the reasons that you can't manage? Oh, I'm anxiety, depression. Okay. But physically, what is it about stairs that you couldn't do? It's not physically stairs, it's heights. It's not stairs. Yeah. I've lived high up before and I didn't do very well. Hence why I moved into private in the first place. But That's you and your kids are becoming awkward. homeless. We need to find so a little, I'll keep, keep it straight. Dispatches has been investigating how councils across the country have signed up to risky loan deals with the banks known as Lobos. <laughs> Warsaw. Cuts are hitting here. But one thing that's not being cut 
is the grass. <laughs> this is the way I normally go, straight up here. That's and as you can see, it's quite high, the grass. For Angie Mason, it's making her life tougher. When did they stop cutting the grass? They haven't cut it at all this year. And they used to cut it last week? They used to week. cut it every two, three weeks Every last two, three year. weeks. Yeah. Because of the uh, that financially, they like, you know they were going to cut down on it was costing too much money. This area here is cut. Yeah, the cut yeah, benefits. The, um, the landlord himself had that cut because it was affecting his food trade. Uh, it's, it's not fair, is it? He's trying to make a living. But your dog seems to enjoy anyway. Yeah, she's she's okay. She doesn't like it when it's wet. Walsall has got more than a hundred million pounds of lobos, and like many councils, it really expects high interest rates on these loans, and it's very expensive to get out of them. Hundred million? Interest on hundred million? If Walsall could borrow at today's rates, they would be better off by more than a million pounds a year. Plenty of money to cut the grass. Hundred pounds for his grand lobo contract. Walsall took out for fifteen million pounds. What are the kind of profits that Barker, you would estimate Barker's might make on a, on a deal like that? On deals like this that we've analysed, on day one, the bank would have made a profit of a million pounds of profit. A million pounds on, on this deal? Absolutely, on day one, and this is banked by the bank on the day of the transaction. Time to play the dispatches Lobo game. This time, in Warsaw. Loans. Walsall took out a loan from Barclays for, Four million. Million. for 15 million pounds. Yeah. What profit do you think Barclays made on that That's loan on the first day? On the first day? Yeah. Per year. Per year. Per year. Yeah. 10,000 pounds. Just, just put your, just put your money there. Probably paying around 4 million in interest. Pounds. And the answer is... This is how they bury it all in boxes it's and boxes and boxes I mean, with inverse with jargon. That sounds vaguely rude to me. So a normal floating interest rate loan, if interest rates rise, you pay more. Yeah. If interest rates fall, you pay less. Yeah. And an inverse floater, it's the other way around. So if interest rates fall, you actually end up paying more. And that's what would have happened here. Councils with inverse floaters like New York Cornwall bet on interest rate rising. 
cut rates fell and stayed low, which has cost them millions. Our investigation has shown at least 12 councils have gambled in this way. I'm in Edinburgh, home to RBS. It's their annual general meeting, so I thought I'd pay them a visit. I wanted to ask RBS about the high rates of interest they're charging councils. Lots of security. Yeah. We do own it. Taxpayer owns about 80% of it. To make sure I could ask a question, I thought to share. Anthony Barney from Channel 4, we come to the annual general meeting. Woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So I'm going to go in now and see what's going on, and uh, I'll come up and tell you what happened later. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. They wouldn't allow our cameras in, but they stream the meeting on the web. Anthony Barnett, I'm a reporter for Channel 4. Um, could you justify how you are charging councils, uh, some of the poorest in the country, uh, high interest rates on complex and risky loans called LOBOs. Some of these rates are as high as, as more than 7%. Um, well, you know, we, uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult to, uh, to talk about uh, the specific interest rates that attach to specific asset classes. The rates go up and down. Uh, and sometimes we do quite well with interest rate spreads and sometimes we do extremely badly with interest rate spreads. Uh, that's uh, also the nature of banking. So I, I don't think, that we don't have any mechanism for separating out councils for particular treatment, and uh, I don't think we've got the market power to do that. No mechanism, you're a bank. Well, I did manage to ask the chairman a question. No, there's no accountability. Interest rates RBS were charging councils. And his answer seems to suggest, well, that was just the nature of banking. Sometimes interest rates go up, and sometimes they go down. <laughs> I wonder what the residents of cash struck councils would make of that. Of course there isn't, because they've been given the free reign. That's what the Trans-Pacific Partnership is all about. So they can, yes, yeah, so there's no mechanism, so they can just... They, they, they can write the rules today, and then you sign that. And in that it says the rules can change at any time. So then you've agreed to it. So amongst all this city jargon and gobbledygook, there is one word I finally understand. Advisor. Huh. It turns out councils hire specialist financial firms to advise them on their borrowing. Yeah, people who work we for the same that people. As well as being paid by councils, some of these advisors earned commission from city brokers Ooh. if the council took out a lobo. Mark Pickering works the sector, a firm of council advisors which earned these commissions. He it's the nature of money itself. Of interest. Now, the Competition Commission did look at this industry um, some years publicly. The, there were these payments that went from brokers to sector. Is this something that went on when you were there? Well, it's a massive record in the Competition Commission uh, inquiring whether we spend money if it would go on during the time. And how did you feel about that? I thought we were and were people there under pressure to sell or no, those people who brought in more commission? Oh. It was a more sales environment than the one we were forced to create on a sector. Mark Pickering left sector and set up a rival firm, which doesn't pay commission. Your advice to most of your clients has been over the years not to go down the Lobo route. That's right, because it's rare to find a situation in which the balance of the benefits have seen to fall favourably on the local Capital, which owns Centre, told us they strongly refute any allegations of inappropriate business activity. We provided generic, factual, comparative information to local authorities regarding their funding options. We did not and do not direct local authorities to seek funding from any specific organisation. The man who chairs the parliamentary committee which scrutinises local government is Clive Best. What does he make of the fact that some of these council advisors were being paid commission? Outrageous. Uh, in the end, if the council uh, appoints and pays for uh, an independent outside advice to come in, they expect that advice to be independent and not to be paid for by somebody else who's gaining a profit from these loads being set up. I mean, that really is scandalous if that happens. 
He wants the financial conduct authority to take action. Uh, I think the, uh, the FCA now ought to investigate this. And if it hasn't got the powers, then government ought to consider giving it the power to regulate the Um Should these loans be continued? Is there any way that can be unraveled? And councils given that loans are at a fair interest rate? Governments also the have to run by a bank. And some the evidence that we've shown you. Do you think this is an area that your committee should be looking at? Uh, yes, I think the committee will want to look into this very seriously. Mm. As councils mm. struggle with it's government cuts, they're paying millions in interest to the bank. And for you and me, that means less money for public services. Basically, bank robbery in reverse these days. That's how it is. Mafia don't bother to rob banks, they just become a bank. Oh, because people stop caring. They don't give a damn about nothing. Just get it all now. Because money, you know? Money. Yeah. That's how people are living. And then they wonder. They, they don't realise they get all one day. How to get a council out. Woo! Yeah. That's what they want. All man down. Everything else up.